Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Michelle Pardo has lived and worked in Lake Forest for over two decades. Michelle's lending experience when combined with her real estate expertise makes her an invaluable asset to her clients as they navigate their home buying or selling process. Call Michelle now at 847-528-8721, 847-528-8721. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grove. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and ganjie. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Laracy and Company CPAs founded in 2010 by Lake Forest own Brian Laracy specializes in tax preparation and bookkeeping services. Earning the People Love Us on Yelp Award, their process is straightforward. Just upload, review, and file. For a free quote, visit LaracyCPA.com now. That's L-A-R-I-S-E-Y-C-P-A dot com. I'm excited to share with you something special from our Lake Forest community, the Aesthetic Lounge Med Spa, located at 775 North Bank Lane in Lake Forest near Wisconsin Avenue. This just isn't any spa. They offer an amazing blend of traditional spa services, plus the added benefit of medical procedures and treatments. In a relaxing and luxurious spa environment, you can enjoy a range of cosmetic and aesthetic treatments. These are all performed under the supervision of top medical professionals. The Aesthetic Lounge Med Spa provides skin care, facial rejuvenation, body contouring, laser hair removal, Botox, dermal fillers, chemical peers, and much more. What's great is that each treatment is tailored not just to enhance your appearance, but also to address specific skin concerns and to promote overall well-being. So if you're looking to pamper yourself and take your beauty routine to the next level, give the Aesthetic Lounge Med Spa a call at 224-768-8028 or visit them at their location on North Bank Lane. It's an experience your skin will thank you for. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters, Otto, John C., Helen, Herrick, and J.M. Hey. What up, brother? What's happening? Tell Let's me. Go. Let's go horizontal. No. Oh, yeah. Where are you? I'm in the lovely city of Springfield. Springfield? Interesting. How's my lighting? Good enough. I'm in a room with a window here. Good move over. It's, it's good enough. All right. So you guys got her. Are you debating on the different type of scratch off material to use? <laughs> Does it stick underneath your fingernail as much? There's always a debate in Springfield about something. <laughs> so spanky. Yeah. What was Spanky doing? Looking for alfalfa? He's up to no good. But I think, you know, when Lake Forest cops did their job, uh, the question is, did the uh, state's attorney do his job? And I'm not so sure. Uh, Is this guy back out on the street or is he held? Well, I think he's been undercharged. He got he got charged with burglary. But I'm. I've heard a few people say he really should have been charged with home invasion, which is a much more serious crime. And that means somebody was home. Right. And there was somebody home, the yeah. elderly woman. Right. right. Who they restrained, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, we see a pattern here of the state's attorney, Lake County state's attorney, Eric Reinhardt, being soft on crime or undercharging people. Um, that should have been charged higher. I, you know, you're gonna have to ask him why. I don't know. I'd like um, to. Yeah, he's welcome to come on and explain himself. But I think if this had happened in another county besides Lake or Cook, uh, he would have been charged with home invasion. Uh, well, and that has nothing to do with the Safety Act. You know, they can hide behind the Safety Act all they want. Then the Safety Act is a bad piece of legislation, though Reinhardt supported it. But there's Still a lot, a lot of discretion by the state's attorney on stuff. Fair enough. What else has been going on in town? Oh, had a lot of rain. Yeah. C page. (laughs) Heard some uh, people got flooded. 
Yeah. Uh, I've gotten a little bit of water, which I've never gotten before. Uh, I'm going to have to check, you know, it couldn't, it's, I don't think it's the foundation, but I think everybody needs to check their window well drains. Cause yeah, make sure those are unclogged. Yeah. I think that's what I've run into the problem, you know, clogged, all with, clogged. with cicadas. <laughs> Get the shop back out. <laughs> uh, supposedly, uh, and I think this is true. The the sound is starting to go away. But uh, do you are you catching a waft of uh, cicada carcasses? I've seen a few out there. Um, but I think some on my some on my windshield. But uh, yeah, yeah. In certain areas, you're going through. It's like going through uh, Beirut, man. It's you know, pimp it or south side. Well, you know. Anytime you drive at night on the highway, you get the bug in the rural areas, you get the bug stuff on your windshield. But I am get I got it just driving on the tri-state from like Lake Forest to O'Hare. You know, I mean, right. that's, that's how crazy it was during the day, not even at night, during the day. Well, let's see if they, uh, the cicadas stink up the place. I know one person who's not going to stink up the place. It's always sunshine whenever he books a show. That's where I get Rick Amos. <laughs> He's going to clear all the cicadas by uh, 4th of July. Uh, no, we're going to blame him for the cicadas because he's on the hook for everything. <laughs> you know why you're on... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Rick, Rick. Rick Amos. Good to be here. How are you guys? Oh, yeah. Okay. Making friends. <laughs> Aren't we all just trying to make more friends, right? That's right. I got so many friends, Rick. Got Especially... friends in high places. <laughs> the Garth Brooks if you got so many, you have to start like parsing some of them out, just saying you don't have time for them. I, I had a friend do that to me years ago. He said, Hey, really like you, but I just don't have any time for new friends. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy, whoever that is. <laughs> so so Rick Amos. Friends of Park and Rec, uh, board member, what what title should we give you so we can uh, address you correctly? So I am the event coordinator for the festival and fireworks. So I've been a longtime board member for the Friends, uh, okay. 18 years. That's a nice run. And I've had board positions in the past in terms of being official. But, you know, now I'm transitioning out over the next five years and so other people are now assuming leadership roles. Oh, that's a five-year plan. I like that. Well, I've been saying that. I, I used to say one to two years, and that was three years ago. So now I just yeah. say five because it doesn't make me look as bad. All right. Well, I enjoy it. So it's fun to do. We got a good group of folks on there. So. Well, if it's a, if a, an event's successful, it's everyone else's credit. When it sucks, it's your fault. That's kind of how the world works, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> What do we got coming up that's uh, in your your realm that you're responsible for? Well, you know, next Thursday is the 4th of July, right? And ready or not, here we come. And we're extremely excited this year. Um, as I said, it's the 17th annual. We had to we had to miss a year there because of a couple of years ago, we had to cancel as we thought. But what's great about this year is we are returning back to our original location, which is Deer Path Community Park. So, so we're excited about that, A, because it's a spectacular park. The city staff and, and all the folks that were involved in that, I think, did a phenomenal job in pulling that together, not without some challenges along the way and some and a few a few naysayers along the way. But no. I, think, I think everybody that has seen it, uh, uh, by and large, has really been impressed with the fact that they've been able to bring in these synthetic turf uh, surfaces, which is more playable. And at the same time, maintain that community park aspect, which was which was critical, you know, from from everybody's perspective. They didn't want this to turn into a sports complex, right? So, so we're back there this year, and candidly, I think half the crowd, if not more, it may be the first time they've been over there to see it. Because unless you had kids in sports, or you're playing pickle, or you have a reason to be over at the rec center, you probably haven't wandered back that direction. So, you know, it's a chance to show off a great city asset. 
my personal judgment is, you know, the the beach project, you know, we did decades ago was a phenomenal success. And I, I hope a decade from now, people look at this 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 park and think the same thing. It's, it's got that potential. With all, uh, Joe, before you get going, you know, with all this rain that we've had lately, okay, uh, has anybody counted up the save days versus the lost days? Uh I'm sure somebody is tracking that. Um, you know, I have a meeting out there today with our event managers as well. We've we've had three or four meetings with city staff to plan it, and you know, it's the un the un the unsaid things that will benefit us from it. So you're right about weather. Weather is not an issue now, where it has been in the past. We've been rained out or been walking around in three inches of muddy water in the past. Um, and equally important is um, no bugs. You know, because mosquitoes and other things, you know, nest down in the grass. So the fact that it's a that's a synthetic surface means that, you know, we shouldn't have the mosquito issues that we've had some years in the past, especially with all this rain. So that's 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 no cicadas. No cicadas. I've been out there three times over the last, you know, once a week. And as I said, I'm out there again today, but no issues whatsoever. Um, in that part of Lake Forest, it's really interesting. Um, you know, you go up to some other communities, uh, the cicadas are heavy, some others they're not. And that part of Lake Forest, probably because of the big wide open area, no real cicada issues to, to be uh, seen. So that's another problem. So help me envision this. I mean, we'll put up an, uh, an overlay, a picture of the, the new park um, for the 4th of July I mean, you got washrooms there. You got a nice little setup. Uh, the fireworks won't be going off there. They'll be at the golf car course going off. Like, how's that going to work? Walk me. Yeah. So for folks that have attended the event in the past, it's it's going to look and feel the same way. We looked at a couple of options this year, but we decided to stay with the traditional layout because, you know, most of our attendees are used to that. So, you know, moving from the from the east side to the west side, the band stage will be up on the on the pavilion, if you will, up next to the rec center, high above the park. So no matter where you're sitting in the park, you'll see the band, you'll see the stage in that area. Um, and then we're going to use the east side of the field. So there's a there's a 30 foot concrete walkway that splits the two fields, if you will. And so we're going to push the crowd to the east side and have seating on the turf area. So we're going to put the support assets, if you will, inflatables for toddlers, uh, games area, um, food vendors, beverage vendors, VIP area over there. All of that will be on the perimeter area of the park to protect the synthetic turf, as well as create more open seating for folks on the turf uh, area, if you will. So it'll look and feel kind of the same. The fireworks are act actually launched from the driving range of Onwencia Golf Club. So as you're sitting in the park, if you kind of look, you know, at two o'clock, if you will, if you're looking at the uh, building from the park area, you'll look over to the side. Uh, you'll have a, a great view of the fireworks um, in terms of we've also done uh, some landscaping work was done there to trim some trees in there. So the view of, of the fireworks will be as good as it's ever been. And and we've got an extended show this year uh, as well, so it, it's it should be a great event as long as the weather cooperates. Will the uh, will the cameras be on? That's uh, people have been talking about that. They like you know, of course, go there, be there. But if you can't, or if you got a kid playing there or whatever, people are watching the feeds, aren't they? They are watching the feeds. Um, uh, there's lots of security around the facility. You know, it gets dark. You know, we we launch fireworks around 9.40, 9.45, uh, waiting for it to be as dark as possible, but yet still finish around 10. Uh, so the camera feeds will probably work pretty well to about 9.15, and then it'll probably be too dark to see anything. Um, and then obviously we have the uh, the lights that'll come on right afterwards for folks to make an easy exit out of the facilities because you know ten ten oh five will be pretty dark then. What what bands you got playing? I know one that's not. <clears throat> so we have a you know we change our theme from year to year. This year we're doing our headliner is uh, is Dancing Queen, which is an Abbott Abbott tribute band, and then we also have the Shagadelics, which is a seventies eighties disco. Uh, type of band. So we kind of went with a uh, a 70s, 80s theme this year. We've done country, we've done classic rock in the past, we've done Michael Jackson, we've done some tribute mm -hmm. artists. 
as well as some original artists like Dennis DeYoung and Rick Springfield and Lou Graham from Foreigner and things of that nature. And so we're we're kind of doing the ABBA tribute thing this year. So pretty excited. They they just played uh, Pride Fest downtown uh, and sold out uh, down there uh, last Sunday night. So uh, they got a they got a nice following in Chicago. So we're expecting a good crowd. Well, we'll reach out to those guys. Maybe Blinding would have made sense. I don't know. We'll see. Might have. No, no, crying over spilled milk. That's next year. 2025. Well, it's a five-year plan, Joe. Five yeah. You know, the hardest part of our job is <laughs> we get a number of folks that say, hey, we want to play your event. And and how do you yeah. how do you decide? Right. So we've got yeah. a meeting committee that kind of goes through all the selections and figures out what feels right. And oh, yeah, or or don't you know, decide. I get it. It's you know, it's politics. It's that politics. inevitable black box out there decides who's playing for <laughs> the lottery. <laughs> you draw names out of a hat. <laughs> in some years it's who's available so you're just <laughs> well, I, I had yeah. a funny story there was a guy that gave my daughter a job in Highland Park years ago when she was 16 years old being a checkout stock girl you know in a clothing store and he was in a band and and called me uh year after year after year to say hey I'd like to play your event I said submit your demo tape we'll take a look at it and you'll be considered and after about three years, he played that. You know, I gave your daughter a job card. Thinking that that would change. <laughs> I said, hey, that, that carries no weight here. I'm just one of 15 people that decide. Oh, you know, I, I would have loved to play July 4th, uh, Rick, but I can't. Palatine wants me. I'm good enough for Palatine, but I'm not yeah, good enough good for you. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Good for you. That, good that, for well, you have a bigger audience there. That, so that, that, that is true. And you know what? I'm good enough for pierogi fest, three hundred thousand people. But like for, but I digress. You know, we don't want to go there, Joe. You had you just on you were good enough. You were good enough for the you were good enough for the pierogies, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were good enough for. It wasn't pierogi fest. You ate you ate twenty of them. You gotta get rib no, test. I, you get rib test on there, then you have kind of you you've made uh, it. Naperville. I don't like Naperville. <laughs> we'll edit that out in post. <laughs> Right. Joe, you had something on the tip of your tongue. I'm sure it was going to be great. So, uh, what's the food going to be, Rick? So we have a we have several food food choices for us. So there's a VIP area, which is which continues to grow year after year. You know, again, depending on the day of the year, depending on the weather, uh, you know, we get anywhere from six thousand to ten thousand folks, you know, attend our event. So that's fantastic. Um, we have a VIP area over there, and so the pass there gets you admission, parking, and um, you know food and beverages for your family or individual pass, depending on what you buy. We have about seven hundred people, seven hundred fifty people of the you know six or seven thousand, eight thousand that that take advantage of that. So that's included, and it's buffet style, all you can eat. But we also have uh, general vendors. So the uh, concession stand in the new facility on the uh, on the uh, north side will be open. So that's the Kemper Food folks. They do a great variety of menus uh, for you. We also have a uh, uh, Oaken restaurant. So the Forrester Hotels restaurant, who's been very supportive of our event. Jesse and her team do a great job, and they they put out fantastic food. Kind of more of the upper end varieties, if you will. Uh, and then we've got a what I'll call an every man's uh, menu, which is catering made simple, who's worked several of our events in the past. So that's everything from burgers and dogs to brats to whole pork sandwiches to fries and salads. So there's a little bit for everybody. Um, obviously, this is also a Ravinia style event. So for those that want to wheel in a cooler or bring their own food, that's okay. Oh, come on in, set up camp Ravinia style and, and bring your own food and beverages if you want to do that. And a lot of people do take advantage of that. Um, but there's quite a few folks that just want to come, enjoy the fireworks, visit with their friends and not have to uh, worry about the food and beverage series. So we've got that side covered for them. Lake Forest Bank. Lake Forest Bank. You know, you can't say enough about the Wintrust folks. They've been uh, not only supportive of our events over the years, but pretty much every every organization in town um they get behind it right and and so you know uh, wendy and and those guys at that team are have been great they're a big presenting sponsor for us again this year uh been a great partner for us 
in so many ways over over my 19 years. And you know, I've, I'll say it now, and I've said it at the, on the stage at the night. Without the support of Wind Trust and and uh, and Lake Forest Bank, you know this event doesn't happen. So they're they're our biggest uh, sponsor, along with the City of Lake Forest, obviously. But uh, they just do a great job supporting our, our event. We're, we couldn't be happier. Wendy, I know you're not watching or listening. Uh, we'd love to have you on uh, to continue the shout out. A lot of a lot of good things going on at uh, Wind Trust and Lake Forest Bank. Oh, boy, they're, they're an amazing organization. I mean, you just love how they've embraced. I saw a statistic that I think like 45% of the residents in Lake Forest have accounts, you know, at, at Lake Forest Bank and Trust. That's an that's an incredible amount of market share considering there seems like to be a bank on about every corner. Well, they're a good deal too. Chase is too dang expensive. I don't like Chase either. See, see how it's how easy I can give an opinion, Rick. I don't care. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. What, what else? We also got Fields Auto Group, which is a oh, big okay. sponsor for us, is behind Wind Trust. So the so Dan Fields lives in town, been supportive of our foundation for years. Uh, they'll have vehicles on display. Uh, they're they're a big major participant in supporting our events as well. So. A shout out to those folks. Um, if if you're looking for a car, they're fantastic. I've bought a couple of from them over the last ten years and have had a great experience there. But Dan and his team uh, do a great job supporting her event as well. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them. You know, uh, buying a new car. This is you know I digress, but there's certain things in life that you just really don't hop out of bed to go do, like go inside a store to a deli counter, yeah. the DMV, yeah. and uh, you know you know, buying a car, but those guys, they. Well, it's generally not a fun experience, right? But, you know, when, what impressed me about Fields, and and this is my own thought, Yeah. you know, during the COVID, when everybody was marking up cars over invoice, Fields doesn't do that. You know, they, they, the price is what the price is, off you go. And so they didn't play those games. So, you know, I think that probably got them a lot of brownie points, if you will, in town in terms of feeling like, all right, at least they're being, honest with me versus taking advantage of a situation that really they didn't have anything to do with creating, but you know, good folks over there. It feels our group. I'd love to have them come on the show, Joe, just to kind of give them a couple of needles here and there about the, you know, let me check with my manager. <laughs> That's the process. You show them your Tesla. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 13 years, I think that thing is just, Still, still going. Uh, Except when it's cold out. Uh, no, it's still just not as far. So, uh, it, and I pre prefer to call it an electric car. I don't need to throw the T word out there. Uh, Rick, uh, what's going on at the beach? I know you got other stuff going on, but uh, that parkway that's going in, I have not taken my cooler down there yet because I don't think it's ready. What's What's going on over there? What do you know? Yeah, so what a great project. When you when you guys see this, it, it is spectacular. Uh, it's scheduled to open uh, around Labor Day. Uh, there were some delays uh, over the over the over the winter and the spring in terms of the manufacturing supplying materials, so some supply chain issues. So originally it was slated to be open early summer. Uh, that's come and gone. So now the the idea is to have it open uh, by Labor Day. But boy, the the drawings of it, the rend renderings of it look great. The uh, city support for that project has been fantastic. As you know, this was kind of a public-private partnership with the city of Lake Forest, plus a bunch of residents stepped up and made donations. Um, there's a donor recognition board, but you know, oddly enough, there's still donations coming in, which is fantastic. Um, I think uh, there's a donor board going at the top or the bottom of the pavilion for those that are interested. And I think there's over 150 families in town that gave it a, at a thousand dollar level or higher that will be recognized on the donor board, you know, two and a half million dollar project. And it's, it's ADA compliant. It's fantastic views and it's a switchback going down to the beach from the top from those that need it or want to use it. Um, and, and I've seen some of the materials and some of the stuff, as I said, they've been preparing the bluff and getting it ready. It's, it's going to be a fantastic asset because it kind of jets out through the trees as you as you want meander down and there's some waypoints along the way where you can stop and observe the lake and do some things so you know again kudos to the city um you know again there was some resistance on this as well but when you kind of see how much time and effort goes into the planning and the engineering and the design of these things 
you know, the one thing that I enjoy about Lake Forest is when the, when the city gets behind doing something, for the most part, they get it right and do it right. Uh, and I think this will be evident to everybody once you get a chance to enjoy that. Unfortunately, it's the end of the summer rather than the beginning. Are we going to have so those? Pete will have to just keep uh, wheeling his cart down the stairs, his beer cart, huh? I was going to say, Pete, now you got a rant for that cart. You're going to be good. <laughs> yeah, but Look am I going to see those Rocky guys running up the ramp now instead of the steps? <clears throat> well, you know what you I'm might. talking about. You might. So, so one of the things uh, we've been encouraging – uh, and others is is it may be a widening of the stairs down to the beach or a second stairwell. Ah. There are those, and I'm one of them that that exercise and run up and down that, and you know that gets rather busy and difficult for folks that like to do that. So, you yes, you probably will see folks that are using the pathway as an exercise tool. It is six feet wide, so that may make it easier than the stairs to get by people. But but hopefully hopefully there's some excess funds in the work from the fundraising that will allow us to to uh, to widen that stairwell, if you will, by the Belvedere. That would be a great addition as well. Did you guys see that left bank wagon? I think they're blowing the dust off of that thing to uh, put that down there. Is that is that rumor true or? I, you know, I do not know. I know the city is working on ways to get more folks to enjoy the beach area, the beach pavilion. Um, we, we've, we've, uh, here, here, I'm going to, I'm going to re release some news for you, Pete. Oh, breaking. Hold on. Do, 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 it, do, might, do. it might be breaking. So if this doesn't happen, I want to put the disclaimer on there. We, <laughs> we have, some preliminary discussions are being held about potentially moving the Lake Forest Festival and Firework to the beach next year. Ooh. So the Bravo. thought would be the thought would be that we would move it. We would use the beach facility for seating as well as the forest park area up top. Um, probably bring in a barge and, and shoot off the fireworks from the barge over the water. Uh, and similar to those that were down there for the 150th celebration, you know, we had down there several years ago, which was a great success in using that facility for a community party. Um, there's some discussion, very low level. I, 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 I hear you. Not having told you this this early because it may or may <laughs> not happen, but at least we're looking at the possibility of, of potentially doing that and, and having having that be an alternative site for the festival fireworks, right? which I think would be great. The logistics is the hard part. How do you get people in? How do you get people out? You know, if those northeast winds are coming off the lake and there's six foot chop, now the fireworks barges can't be used. So, you know, there's some uh, there's some uncontrollables there that we have to take into consideration in terms of having backup and alternative plans. But it'd be an interesting idea, if you will, and and we think it would be a great addition if the fireworks maybe were to be able to do that. We'll see. And it would be great. You had a band playing there, The Tide is High by Blondie. Oh, yes. Can there you go. Know, can you guys recommend anybody that could do that? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what the budget looks like uh, there, Rick. Uh, <laughs> On your five-year plan. Five-year plan. So, Well, if you do it at the beach, let's see. What are we going to have? We're going to have coho salmon advocates. Um, we're going <laughs> to... You know, there's always a few challenges, right? No matter where you do it, the, the uh, you know, change is hard, not only for those that plan it, but for those that attend it. The, uh, I, I really think we'll look and see candidly. We'll look and see how this year goes back at the new Deer Path Community Park. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that like the easy access, easy in and out, parking yeah. there, yeah. plenty of space to spread out. We've also created an area of on the western side of the field, which will be kind of a kid's zone. So for those that want to, you know, throw the football around with mom or dad or toss the baseball or throw the Frisbee or play soccer or run around and do some things back there, there's a kid's area there that'll be on this on the, uh, you know, the northwest side of that field. So, you know, there's a lot of usable space down there. You know, and, you know, candidly, one of the things that concerns me about the beach is, you know, do you got people wandering in the water at night when nobody's around to see it? And Yeah, yeah. The potential issues there of, of people wandering off campus, if you will, is it's a little less controllable. The Deer Path Community Park, we fence the whole property. Yeah. In fact, we close off the western side so nobody can make it down to the ditch, if you will, or the stream, you know, that moves down that way. 
just because, you know, with eight or 10,000 people walking around, it's easy for somebody to wander off and not be noticed. Typically, typically every year at the right before the fireworks, I stand up on stage and say, hey, well, there's four or five kids that can't find their parents. Can you come up here and retrieve them? Yeah. You know, so doing it at the beach gives gives me a little anxiety just thinking about that. Right? So, well, yeah. there's been a lot of stuff, unfortunately, in the news, you know, locally of uh, kids running into problems out on the waters. Uh as simple as uh, being on a uh, surfboard or what you stand and surf or whatever it is, and you get, uh, you know, a mile offshore, uh, yeah. it's not a good thing, but a good thing we got that boat. I was going to say, one of the reasons we did the uh, fire and rescue boat was, you know, there were enough incidences uh, along the, the coast, um, if you will, along the shore that there was no easy way to get there and do that. So Pete and the fire team have done a great job. And, you know, in terms of uh, the good news is there's probably a dozen to two dozen rescues a, a season. So it's not too high and so far really without incident. But, yeah, you're out there stranded or somebody wanders off because the current's going the wrong way and it becomes a real problem. quickly. Yeah, you don't want any of those three hour tours. You got any uh, anything going on in uh, August uh, music wise? You know, we do not. We decided to, to suspend the Lake Forest Music Festival this year. Um, we've had some challenges with that event, candidly. Uh, the, the folks that attend it love it. Um, and we've had some great musical talent at that show. And, and for those folks that come do it, they enjoy it. The challenge has been is, is getting the attendance to where it becomes what it's supposed to be, which is a great community event that, that raises money for the Park and Recreation Department, right? And so that that project has not been uh, performing and economically. So we we've we've postponed that or suspended that for now. We're looking at alternative and options. We've been talking to some other folks that do these things in terms of other things that we should be considering. So it could possibly return, but at this point in time, we've decided not to do anything. So our next big community event will be the tree lighting festival and holiday. Uh, ceremony, which is the uh, Friday after Thanksgiving in Market Square. Any breaking news on that? Any different formats or because, you, you know, you know, it's a good question. I invite people that are listening um, to the podcast to give us feedback. Um, you know, we've kind of scaled back last year from the previous year, which which some folks thought was maybe a little bit too commercialized. Uh, in terms of we said, hey, we set up for this. Let's bring a band in and have them play afterwards for folks that want to stick around. Uh, and last year, we kind of peeled it back and made it a shorter, more condensed show, holiday themed uh, from beginning to end. And it seemed to hit a hit the sweet spot in terms of feedback. Attendance is about five or 6,000 people in Market Square. So, you know, we're pleased with that. Uh, and it's a, it's a great event. But, you know, the thought would be there's a, there's other festivals other holiday festivals you know that also share challenging weather concerns like us and and there they've been able to to get the the attendees to dress for it so you can turn in and say hey if we're going to set this up and bring everybody into market square why not turn it into a six-hour event versus a two-hour event um but but so far we have not decided if we want to try and extend that or just kind of stay with what we've been doing for what 40 years I really do think we got to reach out to the uh, Hallmark Channel and have them uh, be be a part of it. Because really, you go out there, it's like one of those dumb movies my wife's always watching. You know, it's funny you mention that. I'll I'll get five or six people that are in from out of town visiting family or friends, and they'll come up to us and say, hey, this is great. It's like being in a Hallmark movie. So you're absolutely right. Okay. There's chestnuts roasting on an open fire off on the <laughs> side, yeah. Especially when you're playing July Fourth, yeah, and we and we just had our Fred Jackson golf outing. That was ah. uh, again this year, fantastic event, great weather. Uh, you know, we made a, a nice amount of money uh, for that event and the auction and the golf outing. So, you know, the friends is is really uh, you know praying for good weather and not too hot. You know, on July Fourth and a good turnout here because. As you know, our mission is 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 about wellness and and community events. But ultimately, we are a fundraising organization designed to uh, give money back to the Park and Recreation Department to help them fund and pay for things that aren't in their budgets. Um, and one of the most important things we do is support activities in the community of future planning, 
uh, endeavors, but also, you know, like the Deer Path Community Park, if you will, that whole concept started by a bunch of folks about a dozen years ago. Uh, and here we are. So there's other there's other things like that, for example, a potential new rec center. You know, yeah. where would that be? How are we going to do that? When will that happen? Uh, but but, you know, on an annual basis, one of the most important things we do is raise money for scholarships, because the, despite what everybody thinks of the Lake Forest and the residents of Lake Forest, there are those families that could use a little, you know, a little financial assistance. Um, you know, to help their kids, especially in the summertime, participate in programs. You know, everything in the world is more expensive with this crazy inflation, right? So, you know, we we give out a fair, you know, thousands of dollars every year to help those kids that, that want to participate in programs, but maybe need need, need a little help. Are you uh, putting more budget towards a uh, pickleball? Uh, are you buying more uh, pickles uh, with the? <laughs> Budget of the friends? Uh... You know, good question. Uh, we just did uh, some uh, North Park uh, analysis, if you will, or West Park analysis, excuse me. You know, we, we put the eight courts in there, uh, which, by the way, will be closed on the 4th of July at 3 o'clock. So if folks are want to play, uh, that park will be shut down at 3 o'clock. But the eight courts went in. So far, we're monitoring the traffic. The Park and Recreation Department, it's been a home run. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of participation and feedback on the facility, again the city went above and beyond in terms of the quality, the materials, and the design there is with the with the shading and with the seating and all that kind of stuff. So we've had we've had fantastic feedback in terms of those pickle facilities. So you know we'll 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 keep trending and watching that data. I know I know some of the designs of some of the future park uh, improvements will include pickle courts as well i think i think west park um not west park excuse me um north Croft park is thinking about adding some of those as part of its redesign plan in, in the future as well did the uh the recreation department didn't they get a new leader we did michael wick came from the city of gurney so he's been on board about six weeks uh i've i've just starting to work with mike was so far very impressed with him and his leadership and and what he's done and and candidly his experience in Gurney, which is obviously a much bigger uh, park department and and they have synthetic fields there. So programming things that we could be doing um, that 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 we haven't been doing. I know he's got lots of ideas and things we're going to do. So I look forward to uh, to seeing what his ideas and thoughts are as we look. Well, you mentioned a new rec center, and I know I've heard from several people that. The current rec center is kind of dated and maybe could, you know, I don't know if it's to build a new one or just improve the current one. I, I don't know what the what the goal is there, but I could see where they want to. Um, yeah, it's way overdue, right? And part of the challenge is we're landlocked back there. So, you know, what are the options? What are the alternatives? Certainly you could renovate that facility, including adding a second floor. Now parking becomes a challenge, right? Or do you relocate that and perhaps to a new site in town and give it more a larger footprint? So there's there's lots of ideas um, I think being tossed around now, but it's a you know these projects, if you will, like like you know going from grass to synthetic surface and then improving the parks was a ten year process, right? So the the rec center. May not be a ten-year process, but certainly it'll be well thought out, and a lot of options will be considered uh, in terms of uh, expand or relocate that facility. And you know, we're not involved in that. We we just have a voice, if you will, in terms of what our thoughts are around that. But you know, folks that folks that make those decisions will figure that out over the coming years. I'm sure. Anything coming top of mind in your five-year plan on what's next? Uh, you guys are always got something uh cooking you, you you broke a little news here today but you know what what's next to put on the radar so people can start percolating about yeah. it to figure out a reason why not to do it yeah you know good question we, you know we've got some some uh there, there is a park and rec board um uh, and so you know some new membership coming there and mike wick's leadership around that you know we're kind of waiting for mike mm -hmm. to probably create a vision in terms of his thoughts and ideas, as well as other city leaders to kind of figure out where is Park and Rec's going uh, in terms of serving the needs of the community. And, 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 and I think appropriately so, 
you know, we've got this great new facility at Deer Pass. So there's probably a year of just observing and watching usage patterns and demands and what what did we get right and, and what are opportunities to improve things there that he and his team will, will be serving. And he's got a great staff over there of doing it. So, you know, being new, new big facility, there's probably a year of just taking it all in, if you will, and figuring out, okay, now that we got it, how can we, how can we leverage these assets and grow these assets into something new and improved? You know, there's been other folks in town, for example, that have been floating the idea of, of putting up a temporary uh, and a dome uh, over part of the park in the wintertime. So now you've got this great asset, you know, you throw up a, a dome. A lot of communities are doing that. Uh, you throw it up in November, you take it down in May. And so now you've got, you know, 12 months usage, if you will, and and you've got a in essence, a temporary new facility while you're figuring out the right rec department facility, right? In, th in theory, you could have 150,000 square foot footprint in there to do all sorts of all sorts of things, you know, during the winter months. So again, that's something that other folks will get involved in and decide if they want to do it. And then, you know, our board and our group is out there to help raise, raise money and be a sounding board in terms of uh, things that we think are good ideas. Here, I'll give you I'll give you something started to get started on uh, tournaments, getting more use, bringing people from the outside in. Are people softening up to the idea? There was some resistance there. It, may, it makes sense. Uh, why wouldn't we want to show off that field and uh, charge uh, yeah. higher rental fees to people out of town? You know, it's a fair point. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, right? So, so getting more people outside of our community to come and embrace our community is a good thing. You know, this is a great place to raise a family and, and to live. And the more things we have going on in town, the more people come in and see it and may consider those options. So everybody, I think, would embrace that. The challenges on the other side are, okay, the traffic that comes in from out of town, you know, there's really one main artery in and out on Deer Path, right, off of 41 and off the toll road. So the increased traffic patterns and all that kind of stuff is, is, is obviously a concern in terms of the local residents not feeling like, oh my gosh, there's a tournament every weekend now at Deer Path, and now it's getting in and out of Deer Path. Is tough as for those that, that that meander in and out of town. You know that three to three thirty time frame, Monday through Friday, with the school letting out, is is caused a few people to to be frustrated from time to time. So I think there's concerns about doing that on the weekend. But you know we've got we've got you know Townline Park. We've got some other perimeter parks that wouldn't congest the city that I think would be considered for some of those some of those activities as well. So. Again, part of Mike's opportunity for he and his team to kind of assess those situations and, and figure out, you know, how, how can we use city assets to the, and, and at the same time get more people to come in and enjoy, enjoy our community and all the wonderful things that we have to offer. Joe, final thoughts? No, I think, uh, how do we get tickets for uh, 4th of July? It's, it's online or at the door? Good question. You can get them one of two ways. You can you can go to the, the Park and Rec website and buy them online um, and get them ahead of time. And so there'll be a, a, what I'll call an easy express line there when you get to the gate. So if you've bought ahead of time, you come in, show us your pass and you walk right in. For those that want to buy at the gate, those will be offered uh, to you as well. So uh, again, come on in and, and buy tickets online or just buy them at the gate and come on in. Either way is easy. Genius. Okay, great. And uh, Rick, any of those sponsors, you know, if they want a little extra, you know, pub, hook them up. We'll have them on the show. We, you know, huh? I'll I'll sell some cars. <laughs> What's it going to take to we'll put you the in food, this car too. today? What's it going to take? <laughs> Let me check with my manager. There you go. <laughs> Here's a cold <laughs> piece of pizza. <laughs> Rick Amos, friends of Park and Rice. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for coming uh, on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. All Happy Fourth, everyone. Happy Fourth. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. 
Michelle Pardo has lived and worked in Lake Forest for over two decades. Michelle's lending experience when combined with her real estate expertise makes her an invaluable asset to her clients as they navigate their home buying or selling process. Call Michelle now at 847-528-8721, 847-528-8721. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Gangier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Laracy and Company CPAs, founded in 2010 by Lake Forest's own Brian Laracy, specializes in tax preparation and bookkeeping services. Earning the People Love Us on Yelp Award, their process is straightforward. Just upload, review, and file. For a free quote, visit LaracyCPA.com now. That's L-A-R-I-S-E-Y-C-P-A dot com. I'm excited to share with you something special from our Lake Forest community, the Aesthetic Lounge Med Spa, located at 775 North Bank Lane in Lake Forest near Wisconsin Avenue. This just isn't any spa. They offer an amazing blend of traditional spa services plus the added benefit of medical procedures and treatments. In a relaxing and luxurious spa environment, you can enjoy a range of cosmetic and aesthetic treatments. These are all performed under the supervision of top medical professionals. The Aesthetic Lounge Med Spa provides skin care, facial rejuvenation, body contouring, laser hair removal, Botox, dermal fillers, chemical peers, and much more. What's great is that each treatment is tailored not just to enhance your appearance, but also to address specific skin concerns and to promote overall well-being. So if you're looking to pamper yourself and take your beauty routine to the next level, give the Aesthetic Lounge Med Spa a call at 224-768-8028 or visit them at their location on North Bank Lane. It's an experience your skin will thank you for. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters, Otto, John C., Helen, Herrick, and Jay. 